I didn't hear you guys' discussion beforehand, so what did you guys give it, like, just out of curiosity? Um, I actually haven't rated it yet. Well, uh, I gave it a oh. 7. Okay, yeah. Um, I think... It's, it's just, this is gonna be a little weird. Um, I actually kind of feel like it's a 7. Myself. I had rated it as a 6 initially. Oh, and I feel wow. I feel I feel a lot better about it. Like watching it again, like I feel like it was a lot more cohesive than it was the first time. The first time I watched it, I don't think I. Uh, well, I do know what it was. It felt really segmented and really disoriented, or like weird. My like there was stuff all over the place. And, uh, well, I can read what I have up here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I accidentally loaded a YouTube video. I have it. I have it here. Um, I feel like it was over a, a bit all over the place sometimes, but it overall made somewhat sense. The rest of the show was still okay, but it just felt a little confusing sometimes. That's what my initial feeling on the show was before I rewatched I, it. I would argue that it doesn't really start like falling apart. Um, and maybe falling apart is the wrong word, but like it doesn't really start falling apart until like. Until we episode nine, when all of a sudden just shit hits the fan, and we're suddenly like, "Oh, we're no longer here. We're back in time, at some laboratory." See, I felt like it didn't quote unquote fall apart until like the last two episodes. Yeah, I guess. I or, guess... or maybe actually, no. Okay, like the end of episode eleven on. I'm trying to think. Like for me, end of episode eleven was the foreign terrorists. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, from then on, I'm like, okay, well. Cool. You're like, all right, well, that's random bullshit. It's like, I that's... mean, even... Sorry, go ahead. I was like, that didn't need to happen. But to um, make it happen the way this is supposed to, it needed to happen. So, yeah. Whatever. I mean, that, that's the. I guess that's kind of the bad thing about this, is that... Um, and not necessarily that there was anything wrong with that stuff that happened beforehand, but he kind of like it. Only, it, it didn't feel like he wrote himself into a corner, but this was the only path he could take in order for this. Because he was like wrapping everything up nicely. It's like, but he still had like four, ep what, four episodes to go. No, just two. Like yeah, just two. yeah. <laughs> he should have just ended it on episode ten. When and when that... I when, uh, well episode eleven. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, when I first watched the show, I felt like it kind of fell apart. I guess it was in the middle of episode 12, actually, when I was like, I, I guess I didn't really understand this, but like they, they pushed the romance thing like really hard at the end, I guess, the first time I watched it. I always... And I was like, it kind, it kind of didn't really make any sense. And then the last episode was completely like really fucking weird to me when i first watched it i don't know i felt like the hints were there for the romance throughout the rest of the series so like when he just confronts her about it and i i like her reaction too she's because he's like i love you and she's like well good for you <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's like, like cool that's, there's that's cool, another dude. timeline that you interacted with yeah it's like there's a whole timeline of me falling in love with you but that's not me <laughs> i was like that's that's well written <laughs> that makes sense it's like, yeah, that's that's fair. You're you're not going pantsu on head retarded. Good job. But at the same time, she did hint that she had feelings for him and, and never spoke of them. It's just like she's like, "Well, I'm not there yet," which made sense. Sure. Mm -hmm. I will say I did like that the random plans that these kids come up with actually make perfect sense when you think about that they're just a bunch of kids. So it's like, how do we protect everyone? Well, school's supposed to be a safe place. Let's make a school. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally what a kid would think. Or like the or like the mentality of, well, how do we take away everybody's powers? Well, I'll just go door to door and just take them away. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can already fly and do stuff. Right. So why not? And it's like, it's totally a kid mentality, which actually makes perfect sense, because they're just kids. Yeah. I was I was actually okay with it. I was like, I mean, you would think that that would be shitting writing, but at the same time, if you're going to be writing kids that are acting like immature kids, yeah, that's immature kids right there. 
it's just like it it's so weird to me though because because watching it i'm like okay yeah i know they're literally just in high school but it's still weird like he just turned 16 at like two episodes left in the show yeah whatever and i'm like wait oh right i'm watching a bunch of teenagers yeah it's weird because they start getting into some like deeper shit that you don't expect people at that age to get get through is it to be fair a lot of like the depression that he goes through and shit like that i have actually seen that with some of my friends and people that i know and knew in high school because like they lost like their parents um, yeah and it just destroyed them and it and i felt like that was actually pretty well done except for the fact in this show they go way too far with it it's like we really want to show that he just dropped off the face of the earth and he's just in an utter depression so it's like okay well he's eating himself into his depression that makes sense He's he's fighting everybody that tries to help him out. That makes sense. Now he's killing people, and I'm like, now wait a minute. <laughs> I think I think we might need to step back a little bit and look at what the fuck just happened. Well, I mean, at the same time, like yeah, when you're a teenager and you've got like really weird emotions, like it's not uncommon to just go like go fucking off the deep end. I mean, yeah, maybe they they exaggerated a little bit, maybe, but. <laughs> Like, I could understand going through those mentalities. Like, I mean, even I mean, even as a teenager, like, even I was like, like, if you get depressed about something, you're like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Like, you just become, like, really edgy. Yeah, and, and, it's like, and to be honest, to bring like, up a bit of a, a nervous topic, it's like, in all honesty, it's kind of a similar, similar idea, and this might be a bit hyperbole, but, like, Columbine. And, 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 like, if you look at those kids, I'm sure that their mentality was that, you know, they felt hate towards everyone. And they probably suffered some type of depressive or or horrible thing. I don't know the full story of Columbine. But, like, it, I can, you can clearly see their actions and then look at what this kid is doing in this show. And you can see, like, well, it is technically possible for him to go on this massive tirade and just want to hurt people. Because he himself is hurting. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm just saying it, it made a lot more sense to me because I could clearly see where someone could like have a bad situation and then it's something just sends them off the fucking deep end. I guess that's I true. Could easily, I could easily I see the that. escalation. Yeah. It's, it just made so much sense to me. But it's like, I, I think it's just the disconnect with me because like with, with like the depression that I've had before, I just hurt myself. I didn't like go get after other people. So, it's it's a bit of a disconnect of like what how how much I can empathize with the character in that situation. But that's a, on a personal note. I will say though, I guess the one thing that really rubbed me wrong about that episode where he just goes into a massive depression because I thought that was like pretty well done. It's even a even if the even it if the a... actor like oversold it sometimes with his evil laughter. Um, oh, but that was the best. You could you oh, could clearly that tell kicker. that he was going crazy. Um, oh god, it gave me fucking like that's, chills. Yeah, but like I think what I think what got me is that throughout that whole thing, uh, now is like just watching him the entire time, which is the big reveal, and I'm like, oh shit! And then I was thinking, why didn't she help him? He kind of needed a friend. Would you want to? Would you want to stop a psychotic murderer? Like yes, that's right. what she does. <laughs> that's well, what you, no, no, no. She stops him from doing hard drugs. And that's what bothered me. It's like, yeah, you've killed, like, 50 people, but I'm going to stop you at drugs because drugs are bad. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that makes well, I mean, no okay. sense. Technically, he didn't kill them, but he just kind of, like, knocked them and beat them around. Right. Like, yeah. They they never show him actually killing anybody. And we can assume from previous connotation where now always called in an ambulance for somebody that needed it. Mm -hmm. Um. The, even the biggest piece of shit, she always called in the ambulance and made sure that they got medical attention. Um, so we can assume that she probably did that for all these gangs that are attacking him. But, like, it's just weird to have all this massive amounts of violence. She didn't stop him then. It was only whenever he was going to smoke. And I, I shit you not, it must have been marijuana. <laughs> because, like, it's it's smoking and you don't see any, like idea of powder or something like that and it's in a small package i assume it's not crack it seems like it's more like marijuana and i'm like that's what you're gonna stop them on drugs are bad that's where but i'm the, gonna that's where like i'm gonna the, put my when she smacked down. it away like it looked like fucking crystal it, it, dust it's dude. definitely powder it oh, was, was it? okay i guess i just didn't notice it. it was clearly yeah. like 
hard. I mean, it was, yeah, it that was like he was about to like light up a crack pipe or right. something. Right, and that, that I mean, dude, did you not notice that he also like rolled the little like thing right before that scene happened? Like he wrote, like he was gonna literally snort. He was about to snort That's it. what he was going okay. to do. Like, I guess I, I guess I just don't. One, I don't know drugs that well. I mean, who knew? But <laughs> but two, I guess I just I didn't can look at it that much. I, at the same time that I was watching this, I was also writing my notes, so I guess I just wasn't paying attention to the screen that hard. But even still, it's like I don't like the idea that like all this massive violence happens. She doesn't stop him. It's only whenever he's gonna do drugs, and it's like, okay, now I'm putting my foot down. It's like, what the fuck? You, you've been watching him for months, literal months at this point, because we can see a clear passage of time over the days, <sighs> and, and it's and that's when you want to, like, that's when you want to call it. Okay, that's that's enough. We need to help you now. I mean, I, I think I think it's a very small problem. <laughs> I don't yeah. even like it. Didn't even register in my head. Like I that I was can, the thing I to me. I was kind of see. I can see where you're what you're talking about, but I just. It just doesn't matter to me. Like, it, uh, it's, it, like a, it's, it's such it a minuscule detail. That big of an issue for me. I will say the very next scene where she's actually bringing him out of his depression very slowly. I liked that. I also liked something that this writer did really fucking well. It's like he may rush a few things, like the ter- the whole I- the whole thing where the terrorists actually attack and then the th- and then the thing falls and it's really bad. That only happened for like what ten minutes. It was like there's there's these things of like he he can show like those big action points that it seems to be building up to and then they're really short but he does a really good job of actually writing the progression of healing which i thought was really cool so like the he's recovering from his depression and and that takes a full episode and it was a beautiful episode uh and then he's physically healing after um after the building comes down after the terrorist attack and we dedicate a full episode to that and it was really well done i i like that and how he wrapped the plot around this idea of healing over time that's what i like yeah i mean he's he's very good at uh, it's 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 um well basically he's really good at writing He's really good at writing sad things, but he's also really good at bringing you out of it. Like, that's kind of mm-hmm. what he does. He writes it sad, and then he writes it happy. Like, that's what he always does. And what's his full and name? June? June Maeda. 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 Or Maeda. Maeda. Whatever. It's one of those two. It doesn't matter. It's a pronunciation. Yeah, he did a really good job of, of writing, not only of, like, getting out of those, like, depressive moods, but also, like, getting some nice little bits of comedy in there. Especially with, like, a lot of the slapstick. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, it like, never, and it, he, he makes it feel very natural too. Like he doesn't like it's not like just forced comedy. Right, it wasn't made, out of place at all. And and the reactions just, too. I gotta give credit to the director for that as well, and and the actors for like the reactions to jokes while he's like getting out of his depression are much more subdued, instead of like the normal like just like eh what ah it was it was like. Ha, ah, that's, you know, that's good. And it was like, oh, yay. Yay. Yeah. It wasn't, like, overblown. I guess that's what kind of made it, was that it wasn't like it was something you were supposed to go, ha, ha, after you just, like, watch, like, six people die or something. Right. He's like, <clears throat> he's just like, thanks. Thanks for cheering it's, me up. It's like a little chuckle. It's like, you know? Yeah. That makes you feel a little better. Yeah, it made you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. Yeah. I'm trying to think what other shit. Oh, I really put in here. I was like, so let me pose you a question here. So like the, the older sister Misa, like only, only possesses her sister like every now and then. And so, and they'll, they'll actually call out her name and then she possesses them. So like, what is she doing whenever they don't possess? Like, is she just like chilling? Just watching? I, I mean, I just kind of assumed it was like, Hey, I'm here. I'm on standby. <laughs> It's just, I want, I, like, I'm just trying to think in her mentality, is she bored? Just, like, floating around, waiting for somebody to be like, hey, Misa, and then she can just possess her little me sister. Bro. Yeah. And then we see that in one of the episodes. I can't remember which one it is, but they finally get away from, like, all the classmates that are just fawning over the little sister. They get into the, the student council room, and she's like, fucking finally. <laughs> she was oh my like, God, I was bored out of good. my mind. <laughs> yeah. 
I think, uh, yeah, it was episode five, actually. And, and like, they just walk in. She's just like, fuck. <laughs> she actually said fuck, too. Like, the Japanese yeah. voice actor legit said fuck. Was I was so like, That's amazing. Great. Yeah. Uh, that was really then, good. Then, of course, Taka Joe's reaction was like, don't make her say things like that. <laughs> don't make my princess <laughs> say that. And she's like, fuck you. <laughs> and just him, like, smashing his head against the wall at the end of that scene and be like, how do I reconcile this? <laughs> what is happening? I just want to forget everything right now. Just forget this is happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> Please, no. You know what was a weird decision that they did? They, uh... They had... They changed up the the ending songs. Like, a couple of times. Um, yeah. It was, it was a bit weird. It was like... It made sense. So, like, the first episode that we have... That we meet up with the idol. Um, the, the little sister idol we get the ending is like some song that she's done and it it i was like all right that's cool and then the next episode we still have that same song for some reason and then but then the next episode after that they actually switch it up with like an instrumental version of the normal ending song which i thought was cool yeah um and it matched i i will say that the the endings it was a bit weird that they kept like swapping them for a little bit there but like each one actually did match the feeling of like the previous scene going into it um, it was like right before they switched it up with the instrumental one and we had this like really fucking sad scene and then they're like instrumental version to make you feel the feels yeah <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually I have a lot more appreciation for that after seeing some shows like Atlanta was really bad about this where they'd have a really sad scene and then you would have like this fucking happy ending and I'm just yeah. like mm. wait no hold on stop no 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 that's not how this works like, right it's like i've seen that with some other shows too and i'm like whoa, that's stop. really jarring don't do that to me um although some shows like it the way that they have it jarring like that actually works in their favor so like i think uh, i think madoka actually switched up their ending to the like heavy metal thing uh after episode three whenever uh mommy gets her head cut off but yeah. but like i think the episode before that they actually <laughs> had like this really super ominous shit going down and then all of a sudden happy ending and i'm like uh huh it just made me really nervous for what like, the next episode was <laughs> i, thought that was I don't know like yeah the only thing like if we're talking about like really ominous stuff and like reversing like expectations the only thing that comes to mind immediately for me is the second opening for golden time <laughs> <laughs> end oh, of gosh. the world oh it, my god world's end and it's like it's this weird combination of like of just like, that cacophony like someone's playing a piano too loud but there's two of them and they're right next to both of your ears right and like there's someone trying to sing in the background but they're kind of muffled out by the piano and the other shit that's happening around you yeah it was like it was oh, like it's the, so jarring. It was like the piano and the actual singing was in C major, and then like yeah. everything else was in C minor. I was like, Whoa. It, it was so what jarring and wrong. And then the subs kept fucking switching. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. That's another story that, for another that, time, though. That just that just totally fucked with everybody. I think. What, what what did it keep switching between? It was like I don't remember who the subgroup was, but it kept switching just, between I don't, I don't World's even End think about and it. something else. It was World's End, and yeah, it was it was some other like I don't even remember what it was. I don't remember it was either. either. It was different. driving us fucking nuts because we're like, what's the real like, translation? Like you 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 cannot have it say two completely different things. Just decide on one and stop. And then it would you. it would also switch at the most random times. Oh my god! And it'd be fine for a couple episodes, and then it's just like derp. And then on top of that, the show kept like turning into like an even bigger pile of shit <laughs> as it went on, and I was like, "You all need to stop." It just it just kept like, yeah. If you want to talk about like forced drama getting out of hand, oh shit. Uh, Although yeah, I think the o the only the time I actually appreciated Force jo Drama was um, what was it called? Kyokai Connect. Kokoro Connect. Kokoro Connect, um, because the entire premise of that show is Force Drama. <laughs> I 
the entire idea is a god comes in and he's like, hey, I'm going to fuck with you all. And they're like, what? And he's like, yeah, I'll be back. And then, they, and then he just forces them into emotional situations. <laughs> and I was like, well, at least they wrote it into the plot. <laughs> I guess at least they made it into a plot device. Yep. Somehow, like, it, it kind of already is a plot device, but they somehow made it an actual part of the plot. Which and, is kind of, and dude, when you talk about bad subs... <laughs> Oh no, let's don't even go there. I don't want to talk about fucking Balloon Vine right now. That's not what I need. Go girl connect in the fucking mistranslation of Heartseed into Balloon Vine. Oh my wait, God. wait. Because because it's it's Just, like the translation was for a plant, yeah. and the plant can either be yeah. called the Balloon Vine plant or a Heartseed plant. And I clearly, because the idea is, is darkness in their heart grow like getting a little seed of darkness and they're clearly heart seed yep. and then like the subs were like balloon vine and i love it too because it's like super serious and then he's like i am a balloon vine <laughs> i was like this is so bad stop it's just like why Pump the brakes, who that was a good idea that's what i want to know who fucking i'll thought tell you who it is idea. it's whoever that subgroup was yeah I, like as far as forced drama goes though like, I, I didn't feel like, um, I didn't feel like Charlotte did a lot of it. No, really, it was all it was all written into. Like everything had a reason behind it. Yeah. Even if now, granted, the reasons weren't always like super solid and well, well done per se, but they always had a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. I would agree. Um, yeah. And I guess I he, guess that's that's why I think I appreciate the show, was that like it it there was always a reason for something happening, and so I went along with it a lot easier than I would in some other show where I was just like, I realized the outcome is the same as a shitty show, but at the same time, you you got me there at least, so I can I can see where you're coming from. That's a fair point. Um, but this show wasn't bad. No, I I I wouldn't say it was bad. It was just there were some parts of it that i would just like eh, you could have done a better job explaining that or eh, you could have spent a little more time developing that instead of just being like oh hey this is a thing bye or, i and uh, i will say as far as um as far as his writing i did appreciate that not every episode ended on some sad shit like it had the potential to and multiple times in this show I expected it to and then they actually wrapped mm -hmm. up a lot of the sadder elements and were able to end on something happy and i was like that's cool because because there was some really sad shit going on and so it was really oh well, yeah you think so shocker <laughs> no I mean, which, i'm completely emotionless dead dead uh dead little sisters that nah, doesn't faze me it's like there's so wow. much sad shit going on, and sometimes it would end on something absolutely fucking terrible. Oh, like it ended that one episode with like just the the sisters' blood <laughs> amongst the wreckage of the my, school. I was like, oh. My note for that episode. Oh, you mean where she got pizza sauced? Okay. Uh, <laughs> you fucking asshole. No, my my notes transition like like there's four lines of notes for this episode. Oh, creepy girl with the box cutter. I know where this is going. And then space. And then all caps. Blood on the stones. Dead sister. Why EPA works why. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sounds like it, you should put that in a haiku and just write it. Like, for some yeah, reason, I thought you were going to say nice blood on the sand. Because I just. Blood on stone. PA works why. <laughs> Be great. Just but I, I just it went from like 10 to 60 like real fucking quick like like because it was already revved up a little bit because it was like mm -hmm. oh there's something but i don't know like see i thought i thought for for a hot second that it was actually going to be box cutter girl that had collapse i thought so too and i thought i yeah. thought the power wasn't that she was making a bunch of things collapse i thought originally that her power collapse meant that she was making a human body collapse very slowly because uh, the sister because the sister originally got sick and then she started to get worse yeah. 
And I was like, oh. Oh, look at you. I didn't even think of that. And that I was is like, kind of interesting. Oh, no. And then it turned out that it was, no, physically she can crush things around her. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Because I was like, what have you done? Yeah, my... How dare you? How dare you? Yeah, my notes on this is like... <laughs> Like, the first thing that I said whenever they show up at, at, like, the apartment and, like, her friends are gathered there, I was like, oh, she actually has friends. Because <laughs> we just <laughs> never saw them. And then um, I was like, ah, shit, it could be any one of them. But my money's still on the quiet girl. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see. And then I got real nervous because, like, the, this, like, kid who wanted to be her boyfriend, like, corners her. Oh, God, he's so fucking He was creepy. such a douche. But, like... <laughs> I was like, Ugh. wait, is it is it him that has a collapsed power? And they then uh, <laughs> and then I just have an all caps, nope, it, it was definitely quiet girl. And then it turns out it was the little sister that got me again. But yeah. man, like that was some straight up like I don't know, that was that was some corpse party shit whenever she brings out the box cutter and just starts chasing her down on the school. I was like, oh I shit. Know. I was like, what is this? Am I like God. Uh, whoops, just... I opened up a wrong episode of Corpse like, Party instead is of this. this. I was like, oh, this is younger Sinjo Gahara. I get it. <laughs> but, I mean, you never know. Yeah, but... she's, she's too high strung to be Sinjo Gahara. I just. Uh, That's probably true. And then, Jesus Christ. Like. I mean. I was a blubbering mess at the end of episode seven. When the like, little sister finally, like when they when they die, yeah, when she dies, that was no, 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 that that's six. Oh no, the end of and episode, episode seven, seven. When, oh, which was the pressure. When, when now gave, now gave you, dude, the rice. I was a little blubbering mess when I, she when she cooks him the same exact rice as the little sister. I was like, oh. I, uh, uh, yeah, the ending mm. of that was that was very very well done. That just that that whole episode was the high point of the series for me. I mean, it well, really is. Like, oh, I still well, see that episode as probably one of the best parts of the entire show. I, honestly, I I would say episode seven, and then I I feel like episode eight really carried a lot of the momentum for me too. Yeah, because it was um, all of him recovering from his depression and, and dealing with. Yeah, him. and see, and see, that's the thing, because I I thought. I, the way I saw it was like, oh my god, I know what the show is doing now. Because I was thinking that it was going to start us off on a platform of like, you know, huh, high school kids, superpowers, things like that. Oh, yeah. But then transition to the rest of the series being about dealing with grief and loss. And I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. I was like, this, this is so changing. good. <clears throat> It kept changing in, in, like, good ways. It was, like, originally I thought it was going to be, like, kind of lighthearted as they go and, like, capture these, capture, like, get these random kids off the streets that have power so that they're not hurting anybody and put them in the school. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm on board. And then, like, all of a sudden shit goes down and the little sister dies and I'm like, oh, shit. And um, the next couple episodes, it's, like, dealing with that on a very personal nature with, like, the, the cast that we have now. And I was like, that's totally cool. And then it just keeps expanding. Which, speaking of which, <clears throat> that actually happened in episode eight as well. Like he finally gets to the point where he's he's getting over his depression. He's finally dealing with it. All of a sudden, the show just like goes back in time, and they're in a laboratory. Uh, that's episode nine, but yeah. Is that episode nine? I thought that was episode. Wait, what now? No, that was episode nine. Yeah. Yeah, you're thinking of episode. <laughs> yeah, nine. episode eight. When, when, when he gets the end of the list and. Uh, what I actually really liked about episode 8 was that the fact that the depression thing like because what a lot of what I've seen a lot of shows do is that they have a depressing moment like episode 7 and then the character fully makes a good recovery in like what you would see in episode 8 right. and you could see the effects of it a little bit but the fact that it kept being brought back up in episode 8 like he's like um, uh, there's there was an example that I was thinking of but basically like he kept referring back to it like how he wasn't like fully yeah like um, i think the yeah. best i think the incident that you might have been thinking of is whenever he was walking with the blind lady and he was like oh i'm not gonna be home um, and he brings out his phone to call his little sister and then he's like legitimately about to cry because he suddenly realizes all oh, right 
she's dead. And I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And <sighs> I don't really see a lot of shows do that. Like, they just do the recovery and yeah. then either, they allude to the beginning and that's it. Either, like, they no rush through the, that. either they rush through the recovery of the depression or the very next episode, they're over it and let's move on. And I'm like, yeah. that's not what happens. It's like that lives with you for the rest of your yeah. life. And I think they really did a good job of expressing <clears throat> that in episode eight. They did. Yeah. I, I, I like how they developed the rest of the show, but I wish she stayed dead. I don't know. I was fine with them going back in time and saying. No, no, no. Her. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm totally fine with how it happened. I just think, like in in an, I feel like you could make two shows out of it. Because I feel like what has been done with it already is fantastic. But I also secretly want a version of the show where she stays dead and he's got to carry that weight. But, I mean, that, 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 might, I mean, that, that, weight, that right. might be a completely different show, but I mean, yeah. Because that's I, just, I think, I think that's that's just that be really my uh, again. So. Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to see your guys' face after, uh, after the thing in episode 9 happens. Like... What did you guys oh, think about that? The, the very first thing that I thought were like episode nine, all of a sudden we go back in time and there's no transition. It's just bam, we're back in time and all of a sudden they're listening to music in a laboratory with like armed guards. And I'm like, what the fuck? Um, I actually put it in my notes. What the fuck? <laughs> and three yeah. separate lines. Um, but like <laughs> the the first thing that I thought of when I was like, oh, it's, it's this motherfucker, June Maeda. And then because I, I remember you telling me about like one of the plots for I don't remember which game it is, but like all of a sudden you're just randomly back in time, and I was like, he's done it again, <laughs> that he, motherfucker. He pulls the twists like out of nowhere at the most random times. Sometimes it's just like twist, and it was and so it's like, jarring. Oh. But I, yeah. even though there was no transition, really, I mean they they had him screaming, and all of a sudden he's remembering things, and I'm like, actually. This makes total sense. Like the way that he wrote it, even though it normally in like something else, I'd be like, "That what the fuck? Why did you transition like that?" He, the way he wrote it actually made it all make sense, and it, it seemed fine. Yeah, it works for this. But yeah, I see. The thing is, like, it it happened, and she was singing the song Trigger, but then she said like like one of the lines was like, "Do you know me?" or something of that nature, and then it flashed back, and he was out, and I was like, "Is this the fucking Matrix?" <laughs> Like is that what is happening? Too. Yeah. Because like I, because I I, I, I didn't think to time travel or alternate timelines. No, yeah. I thought that he was like deep in some like weird induced trance sort of thing. That's and what I, I like, originally thought, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be like the fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where he doesn't know what's real or not. Yeah. But then and, no, it turned out it turned out to be a little I bit more like the time that. travel thing, and I was like, okay, that that's a lot yeah. better, thank goodness. Yeah, and it becomes very much very clear, like pretty quickly, that it is time travel. But for a hot second there, I was like, is it? What is? Is this? Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep rolling. <laughs> I remember when I first watched it, I was like, oh, I had to pause because I was like, did that just happen? What's going on? And I, I knew I knew it was the twist. Like, I was like, what's he fucking done this time? Like, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of basketball is going on right now? <laughs> that was your M. Night Shyamalan moment where you're like, you motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, what that twist? Pretty much. It um, was a twist. This is kind of a mild, a mild point, but anybody else noticed that, like, I don't know if it was technically English, but, like, did you notice that the singer in the post-rock band that they're listening to that sings the Trigger song, it's, like, a slight twang <laughs> in her accent? I was like, am I listening to a female version of Creed right now? <laughs> <laughs> You were just waiting for her to burst out war arms wide open. Yeah, or like, yeah. can you take me her? And then he just like zooms off with high. his flying powers. God, I just... I think you... I just think you've had too much Creed. Really. I have been listening too much Creed, ironically. Um, <clears throat> it's gotten to the point where I actually kind of like Creed. <laughs> You do something ironically enough, it becomes unironic. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, no, I I thought when it went back in time and it actually started to explain like the brother and a lot of the things that were happening, that was that was cool. And that was when I knew that I was like, oh shit, things are about to go like 
four levels deep inception yeah um and i was like that's cool <clears throat> and yeah I, I also think my, my Matrix theory at the time was perfectly fucking validated because... Oh, yeah. You know, well, no, 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 specifically because, um, you know, the, the little sister had been talking about, man, you know, it feels like we had someone else in the family for a while. Right. Oh, gosh, bro. Was there someone with us before? Hey, Onichan. Yeah. Brother, and then, maybe? And then they get this and, older brother who, I, for the entire series, I thought was going to be like their dad or some shit like that. Even though that they had previously mentioned that they had a dad, they never mentioned him ever after that. And I was like, do they just yeah. not remember him? I don't know. Just in the flashbacks, he mm. always had such a child chin. I just I guess, assumed. Yeah. Child chin. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I even wrote in here. I was like, okay, this is just a really fucking long flashback. And then in three separate lines, thank fucking goodness. <laughs> I was like, I don't want this to be the Matrix, because I liked what it was written so far, and I was like, don't just overwrite yeah. that. Although I will say, after they like jump back in time after that, and he goes to save his little sister, I was like, cool, they saved the little sister. That means we kind of rewrote that entire segment where we saved the older brother of now. But um, well, I hope they fix that. And then they showed it at the very, very end of the show, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I was just like, we had this really endearing moment where we save the dude, which causes us now to like actually have more obvious romantic feelings for the protagonist. And we just overwrote that for a while on the show. I was like, well, that's a bit awkward. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> trying to think. Uh, I think. There was a lot of really nice looking food in this show, too. They had this massive influence throughout the throughout the show of just like let's make this a food anime, like, like that, like it, it. It's really weird to the point where it feels like food is some sort of odd thematic element in the show. It's some it type is. of weird yeah. deep level that metaphor. That actually is one of Jin Maida's iconic things. He loves food. He loves okay. people <laughs> being around food. He likes. Uh, he likes the familiar bond associated with food. Like that's that's kind of his thing. Like he okay. likes that. Yeah, because so if if you think about then in episode seven, when you keeps eating those like um like honey dango or whatever they are, yeah, he's and like eating... they're these <clears throat> and they're these sweet indulgences for him, which is also connected to his super violent indulgence of just beating the ever loving shit out of people yeah mm -hmm. so it was, it was interesting to me that and it was it was kind of interesting uh also because like compared to what he was previously eating which was while his sister was around he was eating healthy because he was eating what mm -hmm. she was cooking and then he's just depraved into like this disgusting shit that he's just constantly eating and constantly eating which was interesting i was like oh he's literally eating himself into a depression i was like oh wow yeah. Well, not not only that, um, another another element around that would be the fact that at this point, like, um, the the only time we really see him ever use his like power of uh, taking people over slash plunder, which we we'll get to that later. But um, mm -hmm. basically, he he never uses his power for his own selfish purposes. He only uses it to uh, for the student council after episode one right. when he becomes part of the school. Uh, yeah. So he never never uses his power for himself unless it was at the beginning of episode one like we saw but here he starts taking people over and using it for a selfish thing again mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a selfish indulgence in that way and that that's kind of what the uh that's kind of the way i thought about it yeah because i i guess too like um if you think back to episode one he has like there's all these great moments where he does these like little evil flashes of a grin or something like that Mm -hmm. um and so like we don't ever see him do that again until like episode seven and yeah, he starts making the same kinds of faces again when he's dealing with like, depression yeah yeah i was like oh yeah, he's so, returning to super villain mode but yeah it's so really that's, that's so when you said sweet indulgences that's what i was kind of thinking yeah like it was kind of went with that which i thought was cool so yeah, and then in the very end of the episode, we also see him, like, drop finally one last time, where he's, like, gaining all of these different powers and it's fucking with his mind, and he starts going into that, like, super evil grin and, like, laughing maniacally and shit like that. 
Yeah. Um, and I liked that they that they showed that again. That aspect of his of himself never fully went away. Um, yeah, it's right. just that he was actively choosing to go against it. But when his brain starts getting fucked up, you can clearly see it coming out again. And the only thing that saves him is his love for now. Even though it was like really heartbreaking that he couldn't remember her name or who she was anymore. Oh God! Did like, you see like <laughs> every time? Every time that they had, the, they flashed to the uh, the English, <clears throat> Japanese cards. Did yeah. you read what they said on them? Like at yeah. specific moments, that, like oh my god, that like did it mm -hmm. for me. I was yeah. like, each oh time, my god, I never noticed that. Each time that you look like, at the little booklet that now gave him, it's like each one is is directly representative of what's going on in the show, or like specifically what's going on in that scene. And I was like, huh. And like the last one, which was I actually saved because it made a perfect desktop background, was the one where he just says, "I got home." And I was like, oh, oh this is so sweet. Yeah. And a little tear started to form in my eye. Oh, yeah, that one was really good. Uh, the one that really did it in for me was the one before that, where he he got he finally was done, mm -hmm. and uh, the cards drop because uh, he they fell on the ground for some reason. Mm -hmm. And what they said on them was basically, um, he was like, I have to go home. I don't even know where home is. And then oh, on the shit. card it says, <laughs> Give me a hand. Where's my? What's the address? Like, oh. that's what it says on the cards. Oh shit! And I was like, oh my god! Like, like I just lost it. Like I was like, no! Like I didn't even see that before, but now I see it, and that's fucking beautiful. Yeah, no, I didn't catch that at all. No, it was it was phenomenal. I'll I'll make a picture here. There was also that um, small little moment um, before that where he gets the last power, and it's that one girl that's being courageous. Oh, mm -hmm. that was that was a sweet little moment. Um, oh yeah, it does say. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, give me uh... a hand. I have to. I have to go home. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, that that hits you hard right there. Um, yeah. But the uh, I thought that that was a nice little moment with the last power because like her power, which was kind of super cheesy actually, uh, full hearty cur courage was was uh, just massive courage without fear. Um, and he, he calls it foolhardy courage. And um, but what I liked was that even after he took the power away from her, she was shaking. She was visibly shaking in her knees, and she was still scared. But she still had that courage. It wasn't that. It was just a. It was just her own personality maximized, um, yeah. and without fear. And even even with fear, she still tried to do the right thing. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> this show's just got so many nice, sweet little moments. Yeah, and I think I think the sweet little moments are really they're really good in this show. Like yeah. they're just absolutely perfect sometimes and it's really nice. Yeah. I really like that. It's so a nice Matt, touch. What did you say that you gave the show? Um, I, I mean I gave it like I initially gave it a six because of some of the complaints I had about uh some of like especially the last episode, like I just didn't get it. But uh, after rewatching it I Reevaluated to I guess a seven because I I caught a lot more things the second time through that I didn't see and there's a lot I guess because I was just looking at it more. But. And I think that's fair. It's a it's a solid show. I I do feel like some of some of the moments in the show it's like it seems a little I don't know oddly written. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily bad. It's just like a little oddly. It was it was weird how they did them. Um, yeah, like 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 yeah. Look, what are some examples? I, we didn't really go over it. Well, the whole like, terrorist thing, for, for one. <laughs> that yeah. Was, that was just off the wall. And they, like I said, like they only showed up for like 10 minutes, and then they just were done. We never saw them again. It was just like these terrorists come in, and they threaten like the entire existence of like everybody in the show thus far. They even pull some weird-ass crap where they kidnap Nal and take her clothes off. I don't know why, because anime, I guess. Um, I, I knew you were going to talk about that. I even noted it down. I bet Kyle was going to talk about this. Listen, it bothers me. It's like because male gaze. Well, so. it's like it's weird because like they they had two captives, which I was I was happy about. They had the the dude, and then they had now. And oh um, yeah, I'm coming. And I liked that. And I liked that I like the the dude. He had been tortured, but he was still there. Um, and then Nal actually did put up a fight, which I liked as well. Like, whenever they broke into her apartment to kidnap her, she, like, beat the shit out of the first dude. And then it was only after the second dude got the jump on her that she actually was able to get taken down. And I was like, awesome. 
Uh, but like, I guess maybe they were thinking, well, we don't want to beat her up, so we'll just strip her to show that she is in danger. And I'm like, it felt weird to me because like, if he's sitting in that chair bleeding to death, why didn't they do that for her? It's like we've already seen her get the shit beat out of her before, and she like still persevered through it. I don't, I don't know why they didn't do it this time. Uh, like. I don't know. I think I mean, the biggest the, the, thing I was get like, an information from Umagami and he wouldn't give it to them. Right, but then they use the true serum anyways, which by the way doesn't work. That's not a real thing. <laughs> um, hey. If you we, know what? If, Time travel's not a real thing either. <laughs> Alright, hey. point taken. If if we go to the June Maeda bingo sheet, do say Makina's <laughs> on there. So that is true. Um but like I don't know. I, the, it was just weird that they like. I mean, they, it, they, it's a minor complaint. I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah it's really, a, it's a minor complaint. I don't really care. Um, like, but kind of, oh god, it was like one of the few scenes where we even got something like that in the show. So I was like, whatever. If oh, that's where it's what like they a, wanna, a little bit of fan they, service. If they want to just explain it like that, then that's fine. Like I've seen so many worse examples. Sort of that online. this is this is this is absolutely. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is absolutely nothing. At least she to was not in a real cage. I, at yeah. least she wasn't in a literal at least cage. She was and, not in a literal and, cage. And being raped, yeah. <laughs> they only stripped her of her clothes. She did. She wasn't even like really tied up like a whole bunch, like <clears throat> anime tends to do when they capture people. She just That's had her true. hands tied. Yeah, they 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 yeah. Had, they did have her propped up to where she was kind of on a rope swinging. Which, by the way, that would hurt like a bitch after how yeah. long they kept yeah. her. It was like twelve hours or something. I don't know. It was like half a day. Yeah, that, that was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I guess I'm just saying, they could have made it a lot worse than they did. They could have. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! So. Like, it, like there's there's a lot of things that they yeah. Whatever. So by comparison, this was a lot better. So it I look was, at it like that. but it was still weird. Like, okay, we can't be fully but, progressive in anime. This is Japan. <laughs> but I I will say that that wasn't what rubbed me wrong. It was like the terrorists come in, they threaten everybody, and then we've resolved that in the same exact episode. Granted, the way we resolved it was I liked. Because like he, he wanted to come in and be the big hero and he fucked up and he kill and he almost killed everyone. Um and he ended up killing actually killing one of the main characters because his power got out of hand and then the building collapses. And I'm like, that's cool, because he didn't just randomly somehow come in there and save the day with no plan. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm on board with that. But like, why did we even have these terrorists in the first place? It's like you had a thread of a good idea and then you just like executed really quickly and went and it never came back. Like, it's just it, it it's basically going back to how Matt mentioned, like, you know, it's written OK, but this is literally the only way he could have done it, because the only reason this scene happened was to get Pooh dead and to get you to where he didn't have his time travel ability anymore because of cutting his eye that yeah. was literally the only thing that yeah. was necessary i mean, for that I mean episode. once you have a time power ability like uh, anything can happen so they had to take it away yeah. somehow right. exactly so and there's other not as incoherent ways that they could have done it but it but just I, yeah it, it just it just kind of yeah. it just kind of was an ultimate when you when you the, the way the story was this was just a the ultimatum that it had to be and it kind of sucked that it had to be this way you could kind of tell maybe where he was like he kind of had to compromise it a little bit and just be like i know the quality's going to be a little bit bad here but it's like just, but yeah, i, I just have had to, to bear i'm just gonna have to bear here. with me yeah. like at yeah. least at least we had one weird episode and then it just ended pretty strong yeah um, yeah I was I was actually pretty reasonably happy with that ending. There was a couple of weird things along the way to it, um, but like it it at least ended on a on a note that I was very happy with. Yeah, kind of like, uh, but weird things like something else that happened with Tomori is there's one episode where like she's just sitting eating her lunch and a bunch of classmates like literally take her out behind a building and beat the shit out of her because yeah, they never explained that yeah, yeah th that's the thing because they that was a little strange like they they mention that because you know tomori's power is she can become imperceptible to literally one person only like other people like 
can still see when they her. see her using her yeah they see her as just like someone that beats the shit out of people and like i was like oh okay sure i guess whatever but it doesn't look like she's the kind of person that's just in the habit of doing that so for random kick people. Angles. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the way that it came across because they're like, and this is for so and so, and this is for blah, blah. and it's just I'm like, yeah, I was and trying. Like, is I this is this, an, is this necessary? Together? Yeah, because like, because I, I was like, if you're trying to have us build some sort of empathy for the character, there's better ways to do it than this, especially if you're not going to address it later on. Which spoiler, they don't. It just never comes the up only, again. The only way I think that I I even mentally explained that one was that maybe like she I mean she's been obviously been in the student council for a while so maybe that was all like I knew that was all like all of the people that they probably picked up well, and like sent to different and that's what I was whatever. thinking as well is that like all those people were probably but, mad because she beat the shit out of them and forced them to come to this school and now they're mad at her but I was like. It but, didn't really matter though. Yeah, at all. and they so, just and they it, just never really it, explained it. It was like one maybe two minute scene and then they were done and never went back to it. Yeah. And, and even that justification didn't even register to me because if you recall, like someone makes a point like, isn't it weird that a first year's the student council president or something like that? Yeah. And you get taken on to the school fairly early on in the actual school year. So she couldn't have actually been on the student council for that long. Unless so she, she was, because they do explain that her benefactor was Yu's older brother who was in charge of the school. So she might have been working yeah. with him before she even joined the school. I mean, I guess. But yeah, once again, this is all conjecture. We have no idea. Yeah. They don't yeah, even explain it, and they don't yeah, even allude it, to it. it. And it didn't even matter later on. So. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter because I, and that's that's like it also really doesn't matter, but it just it hurt me. Yeah, no, it's that's like, totally yeah, fair no, because they just do don't that. explain it. It's it's just like yeah, it was kind of like you could take that scene out and everything would be okay. It, nothing would be different. There was no honestly, point to it, the scene. yeah, honestly, it might even be better if you take the scene out. Yeah, because they they build so much empathy for you know for her throughout the rest of the series to where this early kind of you poor thing kind of scene like doesn't need to happen right but but yeah i digress weird weird things but uh, overall pretty solid package absolutely yeah i'm i'm i can still confidently stand by the seven anything else or do you want to wrap up uh uh let me let me scan uh, yeah because i i hit all my points um like i like, like i said it's 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 a pretty solid show there there are a few things that i felt were weirdly done but like when it does emotion it does it really well and i think that's what mm -hmm. i can appreciate most out of out of the show and out of this writer is that when he does emotion he does it really well and he puts as much time as is needed to show that emotion which a yeah. lot of people don't, and so I'm I'm happy that I got to see that in this anime. Yeah, and I'm 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 pretty happy with this. this is my first you know foray into you know June Maida's stuff. Yeah. Um, I I think it was a pretty. I think I think this it was, was a good, ride. It was it's definitely a ride, and this is very indicative of his writing yeah. style. Like, yeah. This is very this is very much him. And Matt, what? you even said because you've you've experienced some of his stuff before that this is kind of like June might a light because it it doesn't even like really try for the tears. Yeah, it's, it, it, it doesn't do. It's it's it, this is definitely not a heavy hitter. This is this is yeah. It's basically June might a light. It's it's very <laughs> it it doesn't it it does everything that he does well. It just doesn't do it like to like the extremes that i've seen it before right it lines it up a little bit and in instead focuses on telling a little bit more of a not necessarily forcing you to cry but just telling a good story yeah <clears throat> oh, cool. um yeah um i guess the only last thing i would have to say is a lot of people uh initially complained about how um well the show a lot of people complained the show was messy but um which uh, is mostly, fair. 
Yeah, yeah. mostly because, um, like, they said, like, the first five episodes could almost be tossed. Like, that's something a lot of people tend to say. Uh, I don't agree with that. I, yeah, I don't agree with that at all. But I feel I'm like... Like, like they are like, if they wanted to just, you know, do a drama, they should have just done a drama. And I'm like, no, like, no. It wouldn't have anywhere near the same emotional impact as it does if we didn't have all that set up. Right, though. why would you start because... with the episode where all of a sudden the little sister dies? It's like, but you wouldn't have known her because you didn't have five episodes yeah. leading up to her death. Yeah. There's no emotional impact at that point. And Plus, I'm, I'm we finally sh- get the other characters and learn about I mean, and I'm sure they can say, like, oh, you rewrite it with other dramatic elements or something. But I feel like having it be this kind of feeling like a typical kind of like shonen superpower y kind of thing. Right. And, and, and then, transitioning to straight drama. Yeah. Like, that is so jarring. And it does such a good job of catching you off guard. Because it's like, they can't actually do this, right? Yeah. It's I like, think, I think oh, the biggest thing is that. Did. And, and I don't know what everybody else was thinking, and I couldn't know, but I would assume yeah, I mean, what I don't it is. Know either, but I just, I was reading, and yeah, that's, that's what something assume... a lot of people kept saying was they should have ditched the slice of life episodes. <laughs> like, and I was like, what? Nope. No, what I assume happened is that they went into it, they went into it, saw those episodes, and, and formed an expectation. So whenever the show directly goes against that expectation and shows you what it really wants to do, which I thought was clever because it sets up what you think the show is going to be, and then all of a sudden uh, it evolves into not evolves, but evolves into something like much greater. And I think it was probably just too jarring for them, and they just didn't like it. Which is fair. I mean, if they yeah. if they if it was too jarring, they didn't like it. I mean, yeah. that's up to them. But I thought it was wonderful. I I thought it was a really good idea. Yeah. And I mean, there there's I mean, you could break down those five episodes. There's a lot of stuff going on. In each of those episodes especially behind the scenes mm-hmm. which you don't think about until you see later in the show yeah, yeah. so it, it was i think they were pretty solid i yeah. didn't have any problems with that they they do a lot of really nice kind of background processing of world building and character building mm-hmm. in those first few episodes and, and it sets an, up a lot of things to come and i think an important right. thing that it also does is it shows a brighter and lighter side to the show which then whenever we start getting into the straight drama uh, shows itself a little bit and I think and I think that was nice it kind of makes you feel nostalgic for the way things were and kind of invokes a little bit more of an emotion because of it yeah um, you mean kind of like how you wanted to probably just wanted to have things go back to the way they used to be before all the powers thing happened yeah but where where you the character actually wanted things to go back to the way they used to be exactly mm-hmm. and I, I think <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly that's represented right. yeah so yeah, yeah clever i yeah. thought it, i thought it was good so a lot mm-hmm. of things like that well if there's nothing building. else uh you know i i i would have been okay seeing more um not japanese not icelandic cigaros that would have been neat <laughs> what He's making uh, Cig- uh, the uh, band. Z- he's making a joke like like z oh. z and all like z and came across to me as just like this weird because they're like it's post rock or whatever and i was like oh i actually put that in my notes i was like oh hey it's post rock because like all the songs that they actually did show from that from that band zined or however you say that it was i put it in my notes i was like oh this post rock sounds a lot like rock (laughs) yeah i was like okay all right um but no yeah um good show overall yeah. All right. I guess yeah. see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Jumana Bingo. Alternate world magic twists high school setting sisters. Food of mass destruction. Yeah, so we got that, bro. Uh, helping others, got it. Autistic heroine. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, arguable, yeah. Uh, illness, S- snow. Did we actually have snow? <sighs> I mm. swear to God, I thought there was snow somewhere in it. I, I, I really want to say that there was snow somewhere. Uh, well, I guess in the last episode, there was snow somewhere. 
Oh, yeah, uh, there yeah. was snow, okay. yeah. Yeah, happy ending at all costs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's rushed and really ham-fisted. Yep. I, I don't know if it I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that. I guess it's not really ham fisted. It just felt like the last episode was zoom zoom zoom. It was it was definitely a montage. Yeah. Wasn't a bad episode though. I liked it. Um illness, yep. In fact they Baseball. even specifically call it an illness several times. Yeah. Baseball. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, meaningful songs. Also, yes. Funny in that this is our song trigger hey get ready <laughs> all right well what else um free space tears family there's family reincarnation uh technically yeah technically yeah yeah if you you really want to argue it you can yeah death befalls yeah animals as people see i don't think we have that yeah i don't think that was a thing Do sex uh, machina? Um, it's like you have to ask. Yeah. <laughs> huh, trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Emo lead? Yeah. Wallies? Yeah. Amnesia? Yes. We actually, did we have multiple instances of amnesia? Um. Yes. If you technically, if you talk about, um, well, there is you obviously, but if you count uh, Tomori's brother, also yes. This is gonna sound really terrible, and I am recording, but <laughs> would you also consider him autistic? <laughs> Tomori's brother. <laughs> Why? Uh... I think there's a difference <laughs> between autism. And trauma induced, like In trauma induced mental degradation. I was gonna say brain microwaving, but yeah, that too. I mean, yeah, it's it's different. Uh, sidekicks, yes, there was poo. Of course. <laughs> Which oh is God, poo. The greatest joke of all time, where he dies saying, "You totally made up that name." <laughs> 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 you motherfucker. <laughs> slapstick, yes. Ghosts. Which, by the way, that bit of slapstick where she kicks him through the window, I was like, what the hell? And then it was, and then you suddenly realize whenever they're like, yeah, anytime he jumps into a body, he steals their powers. You're like, oh. Oh, that's why she did it. Mm-hmm. I was like, clever. Clever. Yeah, on the whole, oh, hey, you actually have everyone's powers thing was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah, they actually uh, alluded to that in episode, in the baseball episode. I think that was four, I think, maybe. Yeah, maybe. What did they do in the baseball episode? That was when uh, now says something like, want to do an experiment or something? And she was like, possess that guy. And he's just like, okay. Then he gets done, and he was like, why did you make me do that? And she's like, nothing. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she wanted to take away his power. Legitimately, I thought, well, maybe she just wanted that hug. Because <laughs> <laughs> when he wakes up, they're hugging. I yeah. mean, that, ma that made sense to me. I don't know about you guys. I mean, there was a lot of instances like that where there was a lot of stuff alluded to in the first few episodes, and then... Like, it seemed like something else, but it really was for an actual reason, like, later on. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that until I watched it the second time. Also, so. they were pushing real fucking hard throughout that entire series. Um, the whole, like, look at the night sky. There's something about it. I mean, like, when you start off and the Emoto has a telescope, it's like, okay, well, this is important somehow. This, right, I don't know how. I don't know what's going to happen, but some shit's important. It's not like this is The Sims where you get a telescope just because you want to level up something. Like, no one has telescopes. <laughs> telescopes are cool, though. They are cool. She fucking stole the show, by the way, that Emoto. 
<clears throat> yep. Yeah, yep. but uh, especially well, about the midway point. <laughs> Not what I was referring to. I mean, actually, you stole the show. I mean, he stole like everything. Oh, hey. <laughs>